This is Lee Habib. You're listening to Our American Stories. And we like to track the American dreamers in this country who start businesses, small businessmen in particular, trying to grow their businesses into bigger ones, hiring people. That's where all the job creation comes from. And who doesn't want to root for the little guy? And we're going to be tracking this story regularly, weekly. And one story caught our eye in the Wall Street Journal recently by Stephen Moore of the Heritage Foundation called The Demise of the Small American Bank. And it was about Vernon Hill. In 1973, at only the age of 27, founded Commerce Bank with one branch in Marlton, New Jersey. This is about the man who put the customer first in retail banking and who says Dodd-Frank, a regulation passed a few years ago, is crushing community banks. We thought this piece was so interesting and Vernon Hill's life so compelling, we put Alex Cortez, our field correspondent, to work. Me and Paul Revere, oh, me and Paul Revere, on the run to Lexington, me and Paul Revere. That's the Steep Canyon Rangers telling the famous story of Paul Revere, this time from the horse's perspective. They're always telling it from Paul's. It's about time the horse got some love. We played the song because Steve Moore called Vernon Hill the reverse Paul Revere, something Vernon never expected or wanted to be called. Absolutely not. The British are coming! The British are coming! Revere warned that the British were coming. Vernon Hill, an American, is warning that the American government is coming for your American dream. They came for his and that other countries are far more welcoming. It is amazing that the business environment in Britain is completely more open, completely freer, and it's much easier to build a major business from scratch in Britain than what it has become in America. Vernon would know. He's built businesses from scratch in both countries. He never planned on building one in Britain. He was forced to. This is his story. My life has pretty much been the American dream. When I started my first bank when I got out of college, there were 24,000 separate banks in America, and we were 24,001. Takes a lot of grit to start a bank right out of college. This grit and the dedication of seeking fans led to Commerce Bank's success. I believe all great brands are great by building fans. Fans join your brand, remain loyal, and bring their friends. No great growth company has ever been built without this idea of building fans. Apple is certainly the clearest example. Every Apple user is trying to convince their friends to switch. You don't really think of your bank as something you're a fan of. So how did Vernon do it? We're open seven days a week. We've, We've gotten rid of every stupid bank rule. We open an account in... 10 minutes or less. If you have a jar of coins at home, the banks don't want you to bring their coin in. We've turned that into a free self-service coin counting machine that you bring your jar of coins, dump them in, get a receipt, get money. It's completely free, and you don't have to bank with us to use these machines. I would have loved me some Commerce Bank a few years ago, just like it was yesterday. I remember walking from bank to bank on a blistering hot day sweating like a pig for a whole hour trying to find a single one that would cash my change and none of them would do it not even my own bank would i got more denials for banks than from girls and these are people who supposedly want my business now if you're working for a large bank or a large business imagine going to your committee and say i want to spend 10 million to put free coin counting machines in your committee says well, what's our return? And you say, no, no, they're free. We just make more friends. Our best things in life are free. With their unique approach of building fans through fun and customer service, Commerce Bank grew to 460 branches and would have likely grown even larger. But government regulators told Vernon that he had to resign or they couldn't open any new branches. Quite an ultimatum. They told him that his very own bank, the bank that he founded, couldn't lease property that he owned, and that his wife's firm couldn't be paid to construct, design, and decorate their branches. Why even start a business in America if you can't sit in the driver's seat? They micromanage 
how we manage the bank, how we grow, whom we make loans to, who can we accept deposits from. Tired of their ultimatums and control, Vernon ultimately decided to resign. Somebody told me uh, the farther you go up the success ladder, the more your ass is exposed. And uh, unfortunately, that's what happened. He told the Wall Street Journal that he believes these very same regulators caused the recent financial crisis. They were forcing his bank and the whole industry to make mortgage loans that he knew and they knew they would lose money on. It came through a law called the Community Reinvestment Act. It is surprising that the same groups of people that govern the banks into the crash of 2008 have now expanded their oversight and control of the banks. It's certainly hard to deny the impact of increased regulation with the Dodd-Frank law on community banks. From an America with 24,000 banks when he started his to only 7,000 today. And Vernon thinks we're headed towards only 500, if not fewer. Where have you gone, George Bailey? America has always been opposed to a few large banks. America believe that lots of small banks serving their local towns, their local people, were much more supportive than a few large banks. Small and medium-sized banks provide credit to people beginning and moving on the American dream. So they know and they interact with the people they're lending money to. The George Baileys of all of our communities are vanishing at a reported rate of one community bank per day. He never once thought of himself, isn't that right, Uncle Billy? He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me, but he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. Meanwhile, the banking options are actually growing in Britain, thanks to Vernon Hill and his government-forced free time that led to his creation of Metro Bank. And thanks to a business climate that actually welcomes his help of helping their people have some fun and pursue their dreams. He told the Wall Street Journal that he can get 100 branches of Metro Bank open in Britain before he can get a single one built in America. And the Brits are sure loving Vernon's Metro Bank. It's their first new retail bank as a country since 1840. Imagine that. And their fans are leading them to open a new branch almost every month. The banks in America and Britain won't let you bring your dog into a branch. We're not sure why. We've turned that into a dog's rule policy. We want you to bring him in. We know we, we know his name. We give him a treat. Uh, we give him a water bowl to take home. We actually on certain weekends arrange for you to adopt dogs in our stores. And that's become a big thing in Britain. And the Brits take that to mean if you love my dog, you must love me. These kinds of things are what helps build a brand. To close, we asked Vernon Hill how he expects things to shake out in America. Every time we bet against America, thankfully, it turns out to be wrong. The regulatory environment is such a mess and so embedded and everywhere, you just wonder if it can ever be fixed. This is Alex Cortez with Our American Stories. To read the full Wall Street Journal column, The Demise of the Small American Bank, by Heritage Foundation Chief Economist Steve Moore, visit WSJ.com.